So this is gonna be one of the longer ones, but in ancient Mesopotamia, which is, was somewhere near modern day Iraq, and I'm sure you've uh, studied ancient Samaria as well. Uh, Mesopotamia and Samaria were very close, and so a lot of their culture and traditions were very similar. So I'm just going to talk about it as Mesopotamia. Um, so they were in modern day Iraq and were huge hubs for culture and trade. And many of the findings that we have about this time show an advanced understanding of music and their idea of music theory, and which I won't go super in depth in. We will talk about it a little bit. Don't worry so much about memorizing the music theory stuff. I just want to put into scope of the progression of things, how the thought of music progressively got more advanced. And so talking about ancient Mesopotamia, a tablet was discovered, and it dated all the way back to about 2000 BCE. And when it was deciphered and translated, it gave specific instructions on how to perform and compose music in harmonies of thirds using a diatonic scale. And I know that probably just sounds like nonsense to a lot of you that don't know what a diatonic scale or what thirds are. All you really need to know is that this is probably one of the closest things to modern day music. And they were the first ones to ever do that. All of the music that Mozart composed a full 3,000 years later that was revolutionary for his time, all of his music was composed in thirds using diatonic scales. And so they beat Mozart to the plate by at least 3,000 years, if not longer. This is just the first instance that we have it written down and recorded. That's the confusing part about a lot of the older music is that it could be way older. These are just the first written records. And so always make sure to remember that. So yeah, this is surprisingly similar to the scales that we use today. And the idea of composing in thirds wasn't used in Europe until about the 1300s, 3,000 years later. Huge time jump, but they were just so ahead of their time when it came to their understanding of music. So one of the most well-known ancient stories from Mesopotamia is the Epic of Gilgamesh which if you haven't studied in English, you will at some point. It is one of the earliest stories in all of human history that we have written down. And the brief overview of the story is this guy Gilgamesh was the strongest, fastest, best person ever. Um, a lot of people believe that the Hercules was based off of the idea of Gilgamesh. To me, reading a lot of these stories, he kind of sounds like an ancient version of Superman. Um, he was strong as an ox and all these other crazy things. Um, but the Epic of Gil Gilgamesh was so well preserved for thousands of years, largely due to the fact that the poem was commonly played with music and sung. Not a lot of people know that, that a lot of these old stories and epics of poems of telling these great tales of amazing men, they were sung to with music. You would have this instrument, which we'll talk about here in a second, and you would play an accompaniment to go with that so that it kept it structured and you could regularly go and say things about this story so that people could understand what you were saying and it was easily memorable. Um, and the head of the bowl in this instrument, and I'm talking about how they would make them very ornate and very pretty and very decorated. The bowl head of these instruments shown on the right, which these are a type of harp, um, is meant to represent the bull of heaven, which was a mythological creature that appears in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Um, and this bull of heaven, uh, which you'll, it's not super important, but he killed this bull and it made a bunch of the gods mad. Um, but the bull of heaven is also where the constellation Taurus comes from. A little fun astrological fact about constellations. Um, so talking about more discoveries that we have, Another tablet was found and dated to be around 1250 BCE and is believed to have one of the oldest recorded melodies. So that, that's huge. Like all this stuff before writing about music, they would just describe what the music was like. This is actual early music notation. Here is how you play this. And these are the specific notes in order of notes. That's a huge leap and bound from where everything else was before because you had to learn it from somebody else. There was no written record of how to play music like we have today with sheet music. This is the first instance of sheet music ever. Um, and this bullhead, 
there was four fragments of it. One of them was destroyed later on. 